Okay, so to begin, uh, the first thing I'll do is select the hair and start adding highlights in wherever I didn't do any rendering in the hair. Because when you're rendering your drawings, uh, keep in mind you never draw in the light areas, you draw in the shadows. So wherever you have obviously the most dark spaces, just put the highlights away from that. And what I'm doing here is using the mask tool, just selecting various areas and going in and adding highlights. Um, it's virtually impossible to go in and color every strand. So adding in certain highlights and certain strands, uh, you're going for like an impressionistic suggestion of the hair. And uh, it was a lot of fun to color this. And considering that it's, uh, it's a Spawn character, I wanted to give it really that 90s flair, that big hair that, you know, McFarlane would always draw back then. Uh, even now, actually. So moving on to the body, uh, started going in and of course you paint uh, from dark to light. And you go in and you just add the highlights uh, wherever necessary as you're trying to uh, figure out the piece. And since I wanted this light source coming from above, uh, it seemed fairly easy to uh, just continue on with that. And the areas with the shadows obviously don't fill that in nearly as much. Uh, and also uh, pay attention to the musculature of the figure. Uh, look at some bounce lighting and also try to find reference of the kind of lighting that you want. Uh, and when you're defining shapes, uh, consider bounce light too, otherwise it's just a simple gradient, but with anatomy in particular you really want to emphasize uh, the body and the musculature. Like especially when coloring a... oh this is a cool trick. With the flatting, uh, what I do is I like to select go into hue saturation if it isn't exactly what I want, and then I go in and just play around with that to get it uh, to the appropriate shade because Sometimes I just don't like, I, I'll like the rendering, but I won't like the color I'm getting. And uh, meanwhile, working through on the skin, doing that same trick, and then finally I find the flesh tones I like, and I was actually coloring it a little too dark, and then I was happy with that. And then adding the green in, I'm going to go in and do a uh, color, or a line hold, excuse me, on the edges of the greenery, um, greenery, <laughs> no, the uh, green energy. Now, uh, now the lips, uh, just picking colors that are complementary, and you don't want to make it look like metal, just enough gloss in there to be kind of attractive. You'll see me zooming in and out a lot, and that's me making sure that I'm getting uh, the effect that I like because sometimes you could really work on an area and then it just gets to be too much, like too much rendering. And you have to keep in mind that unless you're strictly doing digital art, uh, you're gonna want this, get this printed out on posters or if it's a cover, it's gonna be a lot smaller. And I think that one of the keys to uh, figuring that out is to just pulling it back uh, far enough looking at it for uh, appraisal. And when you're rendering, be mindful of texturing. Like for example, the leather jacket has to have a different uh, texture than the skin, than the hair, than uh, what I'm going to be doing with the skulls and everything else. And uh, where you can learn from texturing, of course, is just looking at a uh, photo reference. Uh, and that, and while that's useful, another thing I do like to do is uh, look at other artists that inspire me and see, okay, well, I pick up this comic, I'm flipping through it, like, oh, I really like how such and such artist does this texture, or how they do that texture. In this case, I like to work with a very, uh, very soft brush, and, uh, Actually, another thing I want to point out here is that I don't have a digital tablet or anything like that. I just have a, a MacBook Pro, and I'm doing this on my trackpad. And no, that isn't for any artistic statement or anything like that. I These are literally just the tools I use. Uh, but as I work on this piece, um, 
you're going to start to notice that there's a lot of grays that are going to that are in danger of blending into each other like the chains and the uh, gun for example uh, you don't want them to stand out or you don't want them to blend in against uh, against the jacket and it's important if you're doing your own flatting to flat these differently so they're easier to edit now we skipped ahead a few steps because this would be a really long video but here I'm starting to do her accessories and you can see where I've added a lot of shine onto the chain and here are the spikes I'm not sure exactly what these are supposed to be made of I always interpreted it as bone and another funny thing too I thought I'd point out is she spawns comic or in the comics she spawns costume is remarkably inconsistent from panel to panel I don't know if there's a story reason I missed for that but uh, but I think that if you go to draw a character like this you have some free license like uh, I was just flipping through scorch number one and took uh, took a few different references uh, from that okay now going back to this piece uh, this kind of pouch, this uh, Liefeld like pouch that she has on there. I uh, want to give that a rougher like canvas slash leather texture. And so what that means as opposed to the leather jacket is not a lot of highlights. Now the gun, uh, I really want to make this very shiny. Um, but instead of going it, it with the other colors of the leather jacket, I'm going for a blue hue uh, with the highlights just to make it pop differently against the jacket and now the gun this this was a bear to render uh, just because of all the geometric surfaces and things like that and my first pass of it uh, as you can see I just went way too heavy on the rendering uh, and this is why you need to keep uh, zooming out your art and examining it because I had to think to myself okay individual sections are nice and shiny but obviously this character is a special ops uh, person and in reality they don't make guns that shiny no matter how cool it looks in the art so I had to scale it back a bit and then I had to use that trick with the hue saturation uh, I ended up making the gun kind of green, uh, basically, and I used the levels adjustment to tone down the highlights and uh, really just flatten it out a bit. Now for a huge time jump coming up, uh, so I can talk about the highlights, uh, what I had to do for the background was I just took a texture I'd photographed and put a gradient and use some transfer layers on it. Uh, the highlights, uh, just to give the figure more dimensionality, I chose an orange that I like. It complemented everything. And I'm just going in and filling in all the gaps and things like that uh, to make uh, to make the character pop out a bit more against the background uh, and to make some of those shapes uh, pop even more. And like the gun here benefited from highlights and it's things like that going the extra mile that uh seems tedious um but it is so worth it if you care about your art if you want to improve as an artist uh i say this to myself also because sometimes i'm like oh well maybe there's just i can draw everything in shadow and it will be okay i'm like you can do little techniques like that, but if you rely on it, eventually you're going to shortchange yourself as an artist. So you always have to keep pushing and always have to keep striving. And I'm really happy I did that because even though this is tedious, uh, I ended up with a pretty cool piece in my opinion. I can't wait to do more characters. Uh, coming up next, I think I'll be working on a She-Hulk piece. If there's any characters you want to see, let me know in the comments below and keep telling your stories.